One Saturday morning, years ago, my dad called to my sister and me and said, you guys are coming with me today. You see, when my sister and I were about nine and ten, Dad planned a special Saturday morning. We were going to my grandma's house. And that trip, I think it's fair to say that that trip forever changed my life. Dad really wasn't an outdoors guy. I mean, he grew up on a farm, and he grew up around hunting and fishing, but he never really got in it. Um, he taught the other kids. See, I, I have three older siblings, and between the youngest of them and me, there was 19 years, so it's like my sister and I was a second family. Um, he had taught the other kids some of that stuff, but he had never taught us. But he would tell about days that he would spend and the days that he would finally get some time off of working in the field, he could get to go fishing on his farm. They had a creek that ran through it. And uh, so one Saturday morning, Dad said, you know what? I'm going to show you what I did as a boy and we're going to go fishing. Now we're pretty excited. I didn't know much about what fishing entailed. I could imagine it because I saw about it in books and such. Um, but you know what? Dad didn't have poles in the, in the uh, shop where he kept all the tools and equipment and whatever. He didn't have any poles. He didn't have a tackle box. I said, are we going to stop by the store? He said, no. I told you we're going to do it the way I did it. So okay. So he went into the shop and he got out a ball of white string. He got his jackknife. He did stop off and buy a, a little box of hooks. That was it. I said, don't you need more than that? He said, we'll get more than that when we get to Grandma's house. Well, we got to Grandma's, and the way it works, Grandma lived on the, the farm that, uh, that my dad grew up on, and uh, they, they, they raised cows there, and I guess they raised some pigs there. Uh, it was a farm that was run uh, during the Depression, you know, and so Grandma still lived in that old farmhouse, though the farm itself was, uh, was not active much. Um, some of the folks would uh, grow, uh, rent the, the fields and grow crops on it, but uh, we did get to go play in the, the old barn and go down into pasture and stuff. And, and there, there were cows in the pasture, so you need to watch where you step and that sort of thing. But way in the back of the pasture, there was a creek that went, ran through. Again, I'd never been fishing. I said, what are we going to do about poles? Well, he said, well, here's what you do. You go find a sapling tree, a small one, and, uh, and one that's reasonably straight, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll cut it, and we'll, uh, we'll knock off all the extra branches, and you'll have your own pole. And that's what he did. I found one. My sister found one. All the, the, both poles, uh, both sapling trees, just a little taller than we were, and uh, we got down to the uh, down to the creek. Sitting down by the creek, didn't really know what to expect. Dad had uh, uh, gotten a uh, little box of a uh, uh, little container full of some night crawlers, and that was it. He said, "We're going to make a bobber." And, uh, oh, he had brought some washers. So he tied the washer on the bottom end for, for, uh, for weights. And he tied, now remember now, we don't have fishing line. We got this great big white string. So he put the white string and he, he, uh, he took some little sticks. 
and the sticks he tied in, and the sticks were the bobber. And, uh, and then we would put the, the, the hook on. And he said, now, just throw that in. And again, we didn't have a reel or anything. You just kind of sling it in there. And he said, now, you just wait and watch for that uh, wood to go under. If the wood goes under, then you got to pull. Okay. I got it. Wood goes under, I pull. Now remember, we were in a creek. A creek has a current. So I throw it in. And my bobber's going down like that. And as it got to a certain spot, it then started to go under. I knew what that meant. Pull. Man, I pulled like my whole life depended on it. Snap that pull right in half. <laughs> Dad kind of snickered a little bit. He said, well, it could be a fish or you could have been caught on a rock, but I think that you got caught on a rock. Remember, we don't have fishing string that would have broken. We have big white string. Next time, make sure it's a fish before you start doing that. Okay. So we're going on through. God got me there. Uh, Dad got me another pole. We go through. And, uh, and then we got to the part of fishing that I never did like, and that's the waiting part. Man, I didn't like it. I, um, you know, I ended up, because I was getting fidgety, I ended up spilling the hooks everywhere. And, uh, <laughs> but eventually, after three or four hours, that piece of wood started moving around. And Dad said, now that's a fish. I said, you want me to pull? He said, no, 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 not yet. He's just checking it. You'll see, you'll feel the tug. When you feel that tug, pull, but don't pull like you're trying to break the pole in half. You're gonna rip that fish's lips off. He said, just, just set it and then pull it out. I said, okay. He's going, it's going, going, all of a sudden, tug, 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 bang, it went under. Man, I pop, and then I could feel, doo, 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 and there it was. I, there was something, he said, now you got something, now pull it up. And I pulled it up, put it on the ground, and it was my first look at a bullhead catfish. About like that. I was so excited. Man, this is great. I said, Dad, are we going to eat him? He said, we don't eat catfish. I said, okay, can we keep him? He said, sure, let's show Mom. So, yeah, Mom really wanted to see a catfish. So we got a bucket, we filled it with water, and we took it home, and I showed Mom, and... And then he started acting like he, that wasn't enough water for him. And so Dad said, I think we better let him go because we're not going to eat him. So we let him go. But man, I had my first fish. I was hooked. One of the reasons why I was in it and loved it is because I could picture this is what my dad did. This is what my dad did on his time off is he would, he would sit there with a, with a container full of uh, worms and uh, eat fish. I think we even pulled those worms out of the garden. I don't think we bought them from anywhere. That's what we did. And I'm thinking, man, I am so close to my dad now because I'm learning what he did as a kid. This was cool. And you know what? It created a desire in me that one day, learning from Dad in an unconventional kind of way, it created for me an appetite for fishing. Not necessarily an appetite for fish, but definitely an appetite for fishing. I loved it, learned it. Dad got me a, a real fishing pole for my next birthday and there was a reservoir we went to there was, uh, that, that I could walk to then, and there was a little river in our town I could walk to, and I learned to do that on my own. Man, I love to fish. I learned something. What happened? Dad said, come with me. I came with him. Guess what? He showed me what he did for fishing. Once I learned it, I developed my own passion for fishing. In our passage today, 
We are continuing our study through the book of Mark. And remember our theme through Mark is um, learn of me. We're learning about Jesus the servant. And Jesus has been uh, introduced now. He's been introduced as this is my beloved son. He's been introduced uh, by John the Baptist, the forerunner, and he now had received the heavenly endorsement, endorsement from uh, God the Father, from God the Holy Spirit in the dove, and from Jesus' words himself. So we have Jesus coming on the scene, and now he was uh, tempted and tested, so he was a certified, genuine article, the Messiah. He was tempted and tested by Satan, and we saw that. Led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to prove him, he did, he came out. Now it's time for the active part of ministry. We're learning a little more. Now Jesus is starting to call people to himself. What we're going to see today is that as Jesus called people to himself, we can find some interesting things. We see that Jesus called his disciples authoritatively to learn a new life and to leave their old life and to become fishers of men. Jesus calls, go fish. First thing, let's see as this was a call of authority. Mark chapter 1 and verse 16. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, um, casting, er, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, I will make you to become fishers of men. It's a call of authority. A little bit later, I want you to see something interesting that, that uh, Mark wrote down. Um, let me see. Verse 22. And we'll be talking about this next week. He, he went into the uh, synagogue and he was teaching. The Bible says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught as one that had what? Authority. One that had authority. Not as the scribes. He was teaching a book like he wrote it. Man. Imagine that. Man. Jesus said, come here, come after me. Now this was different. The rabbis of the day, though he was called rabbi from time to time, the rabbis of the day never would call to the student and say, hey, follow me. The rabbis were seen as very wise people. And so, the rabbi would just wait, and if you really wanted to learn something, you'd come follow that rabbi. You'd seek that rabbi out. You'd come on that rabbi's terms. Jesus is coming as an authority and as someone who's reaching out, and he said, hey, I want you. Come follow me. And so, with that authority, um, it commanded some respect. So, Jesus called out with authority, come follow me. Now, that word, come, is an interesting one. It's a command. It's not advice. It was also, that same Greek word was used in another, in another uh, famous passage. You know what it is? Lazarus! Man, that wasn't a suggestion, was it? Come forth! Get over here! Here comes Lazarus in the grave clothes. Guess what? This word that he said to these fishermen, Hey! Come here! Now, that call had an awful lot of authority for them to drop everything they've ever known and to follow him. So it was a call of authority. 
when Jesus calls, he deserves an answer. Amen? Secondly, it was a call to a new life. Look at verse 17. Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Look at verse 20. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee and their ship and their hired servant and went after him. He called them to a new life. Follow after me. That word follow after, that command, follow after me, is meaning follow behind me. It, <coughs> excuse me, the idea is, listen, I want you guys to follow me and learn as we go. I've got stuff to teach you. And the idea is to follow after and learn first by watching. Watch what he does. Now listen, you want to learn of Jesus, study the Bible, watch what he did. Watch how he interacted with people. Now yes, we, you know what? We can, we can read books and, and, uh, and hear great experts on how to talk to people. We can do that. But uh, the best idea, if you want to learn how to be a good soul winner, uh, somebody to reach other people, Jesus said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. First of all, follow me. Watch me. See what I do. Then listen to me. I'm going to teach you how to do this. And then, do what I do. So, here it is. Come follow me. This is a call to discipleship. Jesus is saying, if you follow me, you watch me, you listen to me, and then you imitate me, I will show you something. I will show you a new lifestyle. So, come follow me. Then, he says, I will make you fishers of men. Now, the tense to this verse, I will make, you know what it implies? A process. <laughs> now, when I went with dad that first day to go fishing, was I a fisherman? No. No. I didn't know what I was doing. That's why I broke that pole right in half. But did I learn? Yes. Yeah, I learned enough to be able to take a big fish home. By the way, I'm so glad I was able to teach the same thing to to my kids, only we, we didn't have, uh, we didn't use those kind of poles. We actually had real poles. But um, it's a call to a new life. I will make you fishers of men. It'll take practice. It'll take time. It'll take faithfulness. I will make. This is I will make you fishers of men. To keep your finger here, but go to Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. I'm going to show you something. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. He that winneth souls is wise. I want you to understand something here. The concept, the Old Testament concept of winning a soul is not tricking someone into the sinner's prayer. Amen? A soul in, in the Old Testament, what we're talking about is their trust their, their entire emotional being to win someone over to you. 
to win someone's trust, to win someone's ear, to win influence over them. In order to do that, you've got to be what? Well, as I say, he that winneth souls is. So in order to win someone's trust, you have to be wise. So that it takes a little bit of wisdom in how to win somebody's soul, somebody's trust, somebody's personality and essence over to listening to you. Are you with me? So there's a little bit of skill in fishing. If you see that bobber going just a little bit, you know, and jerk it out of, jerk his lips off. <laughs> you don't do that. It takes a little bit of skill. Hello, no skill. Um, follow Jesus. Watch what he's doing. Watch what he, how he interacted with people. Learn that. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you learn of him, the more you learn the kind of skill that he used and the way he caught fish. It takes a little bit. Guess what? It takes a little bit of bait. It takes a little bit of skill. It takes, so there's, there's, there's a couple of uh, fishing instruments used in this setting. One is a net. So it takes something that's going to gather those fish up. You know, we can use different kinds of nets, eh, Ben? Um, and, uh, and we can use different kinds of things that will bring uh, people in. We can use uh, Kids Bible Club. We get to a lot of kids that way. And uh, we can use Vacation Bible School. We can use a Revival. We can use the Internet. We can use Facebook. We can, we've, we've got ways to cast the nets out there. Amen? But guess what? The other thing that uh, the other guys had was what? They had a, a ship. Now, what does a ship do? Well, Simon and Andrew, they were casting the nets from shore. That can be good. But you ever go fishing, those guys who are, are ladies who like to fish, you ever, you ever go fishing and find that the fish are biting just past where you can cast? Man, you can try to finagle, maybe, maybe you are try to wade out in it a little bit just to get a little further because it seems like if you could just get another three or four feet, I could get right where the fish are, but I can't reach it. What's a ship do? A ship gets where the fish are. So Jesus is saying, look it, I'm going to show you how to gather them in, and I'm going to show you where the fish are. In, uh, in Luke chapter 5, we have a real interesting uh, story about how Jesus comes to the fisherman and he says, hey, you got any meat? You've been fishing. And they say, man, we've been fishing all night. We haven't caught a thing. They're coming in, and they're all depressed. Jesus said, launch out into the deep. Now, at that time, that time of day, the fish generally weren't out in the deep. They were usually up by the shore, and they couldn't get anything by the shore, so they figured if they got not going to get them there, they're not going to get them anywhere. Jesus said, launch out in the deep. What's he saying? I know where the fish are. So guess what? As we learn about fishing, we learn how to cast the net out. We learn how to find where the fish are. Amen? So we go where the fish are. Go where they're biting. So, follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. I'm going to show you how to gather them in. I'm going to show you how to find them. The last thing that we see about becoming fishers of men, though, I mean, that's cool. Man, I, I'm going to learn how to, how to fish for men. I'm going to learn how to win souls. I'm going to learn how to win influence over people and influence them for Christ. Wouldn't that be cool? Amen? But what do you have to do in order to do that? I want you to go back to Mark chapter uh, 1 and look. Verse 18, straightway they did what? They forsook their nets and followed him. You can't do both. God says, listen, I'll show you my way. I got a great way. And you know what? Since I made the fish, 
I know how to catch the fish. Amen? So, but if I'm going to show you how to fish and fish for men, you got to quit your stuff and you got to follow my stuff. Jesus taught us later that, you know what, anyone who loves his father, mother, sister, brother, more than you love Jesus is not worthy of me. Jesus said, listen, I'll show you, but I need commitment. You follow me. Don't follow your dreams and then follow me in your spare time. You want to be a soul winner? You want to learn of me? You want to learn what moves me? Leave your stuff and follow me. So we had the first two disciples, they left their nets. The last two disciples, they left their ship. They left their dad. And they left their hired servant. I think that the last two disciples that we have in our passage here, they had a family business. And they left that too. Now that was a big deal. You leave a family business. Something's been in the family for generations. You have some assets that have been passed on and passed on and passed on and said, nope, you know what? Jesus calls. He calls with authority. And so therefore I got to go. You don't even know how to fish for men. Yeah, but I'm going to learn. If you've been called to be saved, if you've asked Jesus to save you, he's not only called you to go to heaven, he's called you to follow him, to learn of him. Part of that is to learn to be fishers of men. That means, you know what? We gotta leave the other distractions. We gotta leave the other stuff. We gotta quit trying to uh, manipulate stuff. Don't become a Jesus salesman just trying to trick someone into praying a sinner's prayer, but learn genuinely of him, surrendering everything else, and he will teach you how to fish.